911, what's the nature of your emergency? Good morning, police, fire, military, and families, and to everybody who is listening in on the Talk the Living podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, joined by my new friend, Miss Isabel Fortin. Isabel, how are you? I am fantastic. I'm so happy to be here. We're chit-chatting because uh, you're from Canada, and my family is also from Canada. And so um, today, I'm going to be giving away a box of coffee crisps to whoever comments the most within the next 24 hours. So if you guys have any questions as we're going along, drop them here. And if we don't get to it on the live, then I will tag Isabel later. Now, Isabel, you are a veteran of the Canadian Air Force. I am. We thank you for your service. Thank you. And I have to ask how you transitioned into the Air Force, especially as a female, because that's a rarity. Uh, well, military service was the family business. Both my parents served. And, uh, and a funny story, actually, they were both from the same small town here in Canada and they met in Baden, Baden, Germany. And that's, it's, I mean, it, it was the sixties. So um, they had like, they had never seen each other before and they met there and they got married, had my sister and then moved back to Canada. And when I joined, my brother was an air force pilot. So it was, it, it was just, I didn't even question what I was going to do once I grew up. Right. It's right out of high school. I pledge allegiance to the queen because that's what we do as a, as part of the uh, Commonwealth. And, and I, I joined like right, right out of high school. Yeah. So what was your experience like then being in the air force? It was fabulous for about five years. It's uh, I loved everything about it. Everything was new. Everything was the sense of camaraderie, the sense of belonging, of purpose, of serving your country. Everything was very, very appealing to me. Um, I have a really high sense of duty and it was, it was fabulous. And it was, it was fun because it was, you know, my peers were the same age, the same interest and everywhere you went, um, you had a group that you belonged to So, and I was very, very proud to wear the uniform and and walk in my mother's uh, footstep and in my dad's footstep. So I I really, really, really loved it for the first five years. And after five years, it's the actual job I didn't like. Everything else was still fabulous, but the day-to-day job wasn't appealing to me anymore. I felt like I could give more to the world than just, um, you know, pushing paper. And, and so I did another five years. I, I released after 10 years, after a decade. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now for everybody who's listening, I always ask incredibly selfish questions, Isabel, but That's I wonderful. don't often ask intrusive questions. However, the way that we do this, you guys, is there's a, there's a company that Isabel and I got linked up through and on that you're allowed to put some, some preconceived questions that somebody may ask you. And I feel like we can't really get into the service that you do now if we don't mention your mom. And yeah. that's something that um, I'll try not to get emotional about, too, because no. I also have lost my mom. So oh. can you share a little bit about that? Because you mentioned she was also in the military. Yeah, my mom was in the military for about five years, maybe six uh and then she became when she when they moved back to Canada they both uh were honorably discharged and she became the first female um uh, mail carrier m a i l mail carrier um in the country here in in Canada but um as well life because life happens she passed away i was 5 and she was 36 so that's pretty young to to pass it's like me dying 15 years ago so yeah and it's next week is going to be the 47th anniversary of her passing so mm-hmm. it's uh it's shaped my life obviously and i think that was one of the reasons why i wanted to Uh, walk in her in her footstep is because she wasn't there anymore so I wanted to honor um, her life and and her path until it 
it wasn't congruent with who I am and who I was at the time. So that's why I released because like I said earlier, I loved everything about it except for the, the, the actual job. But, you know, had it been only the job, had it been truly my journey, then I could have, you know, changed careers and stayed within uh, the Air Force. But it was just, that's not, I figured out that that's not what my purpose was. So that's why I, I left. And the transition was difficult. Yeah, 10 years is a long time to transition yeah. to civilian life. We've talked about that with a lot of people have joined who have joined the military and then exited and tried that transition. So what are some of the things that helped you to, to make that change? Oh, I did everything. I I I made all the mistakes. I mm. I would not recommend anybody following the path that I took. I, you know, at the beginning it was just I needed to find a job. And so I worked as a customer service rep and then a customer service rep in another industry and then got, you know, promoted. And then a competitor came to get me to be a sales rep. Like I, I tried everything. I really, really did. And um, it was quite by, I don't want to say mistake, but uh, because it wasn't a mistake, but by quite by coincidence, I think that I, I became a massage therapist and I did that oh. for 23 years yeah and it was just you know a friend wanting to go try it out for one of these introduction to Swedish massage weekend and she didn't want to go alone so she asked me to go and I went and for me it, that opened up an entire door of possibilities because even though I'm a mindset coach now uh, the money, the the body and the mind and the soul and the spirit and all that, all of that is all connected together. So, and that that was that was the opening for me to just step outside the military and try something else that was going to be as fulfilling for me when it comes to my sense of duty. Hmm. So, Isabel, what's it like in Canada versus the states when it comes to? Um, maybe help support services that the military provides to somebody? Um, it has gotten better here in the, when I released that, that was a long time ago, but when I released it, the help was very minimal, but at now they're, I mean, even if they come back from Afghanistan, their, their support, uh, they're supported. I mean, and they, they get to see somebody if they suffer from P, uh, PTC, uh, PTSD and they now have uh, what they call a transition coach. So like just like before they even release their they're into they get into a program where they're going to be helped with, you know, finding a job um, as a civilian if they're not at retirement age and getting if they live on base, they're going to get help to find a house, to find an apartment outside of the uh, the military compound. But when I released, it, it wasn't like that at all. It was, here are your marching papers, give us back our stuff, and good luck. And with the, what I, I like to call a swift kick in the ass. Well, yeah, so that trial and error then. Yeah, oh, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. I was listening to an interview that you had done with somebody named Carmela Sterling. Yeah, and Carmella. you told her, you told her that you got tired of just existing. So what was the bridge that took you from massage therapist, if that was the bridge, to mindset coach? Um no, I don't I I don't think that the massage therapy was a bridge. I think it was really um a door opening for me. It, it really was. But when it came to my personal life, um, I was unconsciously, I was trying to live my mother's life because hers had uh, ended so mm. soon. So it took me, it wasn't until I outlived her, until I turned 37 and since she had passed at 36, when there was no guide for me anymore to follow, there was no path to follow anymore. And that's kind of where I had a big aha moment where I went, oh, okay, this is, this is, this isn't right. And I was, I was 
tired of being sad and I was tired of being angry and bitter. And I really wasn't a pleasant person just because I was hurt. I was just a big ball of hurt on two legs walking lost um, in this world. So it was either I had my, my big aha moment was I either kill myself today or I choose another way to live. And that's where when I seek professional help and and thank God I did, because if not, I truly would have taken my life because it was just too much, too much pain for one person to carry in, in this lifetime. So and so I went to clean that up and I became a mindset coach just because I know what it's like to live in darkness. And life is tough sometimes. That's true. And life can be a bitch sometimes. That's true, too. But it's not all about the pain and if you change your mindset then there's hope that you're going to be able to change the rest because it's not about what happens to you it's about how you deal with it so that that was very appealing to me and since I have lived in darkness for 30 years I know the way out so that's for me that was the best way to appeal to my sense of duty and and appeal to Mm -hmm. my sense of service is to wow. take that experience and make something useful out of it. Yeah, I really appreciate you sharing that with me. There's a couple things that are coming up. First of all, I've never heard anybody else do this random computation of age and numbers in the way that you've shared that you <laughs> you did with your mom and how old she was <laughs> and you know, comparing it that way. Life can be a bitch sometimes, but it's not about it's not all about the pain. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, with, with me, I like after my mom died, I even went back and was trying to see like, how old was she when she had me? And like, it's weird how our mind does those sorts of things. And it's so inspiring to see how you were able to put in the work like that and then choose to be able to give that to other people. That's just incredible. There's, there's something when we lose our parents, when we are children, and it doesn't matter how old we are, there's, there's something, there's an imprint in our brain um that when we surpass that age something changes and it happened i'm the youngest of three and it happens to the three of us when my sister turned 36 something happened when my brother turned 36 something happened Mm -hmm. and when for me i'm i'm a late bloomer so when for me it was i had to outlive her Mm -hmm. so when i turned 37 it was like Okay, so now what do I do? Because I don't have a path to follow anymore. So, but yeah, I'm I'm when it comes to dates and 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 age and numbers, and I'm I'm like a computer. I don't know why my brain just remembers all these things and makes connection between all of them. Yeah, that that's awesome. So now, after having done the work, and you know, you you did the hardest part, which I believe is seeking out. Um, something external to be able to support you and and admitting like I I need something more than just myself. And that's definitely something that I think we should take note of. But I'm wondering now, how is it that you're supporting other people who might be in a similar situation? By asking a lot of questions. That's mainly, that's what I do for a living is I ask a lot of questions because the mind that creates the situation that you are in cannot be the mind that gets you out of it. It's like trying to read the label from inside the bottle. So when you get the outside help, which is what I did, and I still do, I still have coaches and I have a a business coach and a public speakers coach and and a personal coach, obviously, because I want to be on top of myself. I want to be on top of my game. So I just ask a lot of questions. We tend to ask ourselves the same questions and they're usually why do i not have this because i deserve it why do i not have that because or if we start doing the comparison game then it's it's even worse so like you know whatever neighbor x has how come i don't have it but if you want to learn something about yourself and if you want another way to live a better way to live if you want to achieve the goals that you haven't yet achieved you need different questions but your, your brain won't create them. So that's why working with a coach is very important. And I, I get the same way. I get this with my coach, especially my personal coach. When she asks me a question and I'm like, oh, 
fuck we're back to this. I, I, you know, I do the same thing. My mind works the same way as everybody else, right? It's just, I equip myself with a lot of people because you can't go through it alone. You can't. And it's, we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to go through life alone. Absolutely agree with that. That resonates with me a a great deal as a, you know, I'm an ICF certified life coach too. And same situation, hiring different coaches for different things. And I recently recorded a podcast talking about how not even our spouses can be all the things to us all of the time. And we have to have that external, um, at the very least, external stimulus to be able to grow and to expand. And um, for anybody who might not be familiar with the difference between psychotherapy and coaching, when you're in psychotherapy, it, it will often be because you have this past trauma or this past event. And that one single thing from the past keeps coming up, coming up, coming up. And then with coaching, it's basically being able to move forward past maybe that and everything else. And so doing the work that way, I think it's so special to have somebody with your experience who understands trauma, um, who has experience, you know, in the military, you understand the, the veteran mindset, so to speak. And I think that is, is truly inspiring. And anybody who might need the help or support um, having an external outlet, sometimes having that one person, Isabel, and maybe you've experienced this, you could be the very only person that somebody has ever unloaded to. And I think that, you know, there's there's no greater gift on both ends of that spectrum. And I know we're running out of time, but those Already? selfish questions, I know it went by fast. Jeez. Those selfish questions and then those very um the questions that I shouldn't ask, I'm going to because you put them on there. And now I'm incredibly curious why you never married and why you don't believe that you weren't made to have children. Um, oh, I wanted kids, but I wanted them for the wrong reasons. Mm. I, I wanted to be a mother because I didn't have mine. And that was pretty much, and again, that was very unconscious on, on my part. Um, so it, it, it just, kind of never happened and now I'm way too old and I've had a hysterectomy so but you know what ironically I'd love to be a grandmother so it's, it's, yeah it's really I think I'm gonna I'm gonna adopt some grandkids um, <laughs> and no but there are so many single parents whose parents are far or I mean everybody needs the love and support in their lives so um why I never married is well, the simple answer is because I never met anybody that I was willing to commit my life to. That was the, That's a simple answer. Um, I don't believe, and I'm willing to change my mind if that person arises or comes in my life, but I don't believe that it that mold is for me. I really mm-hmm. don't think it's for me. I, I am dangerously comfortable alone. And, you know, I have lots of friends and and pets, obviously. And no, I'm not an old cat lady, although I do have a few cats. But it's not about, you know, being alone in my house and being, I'm not like that at all. Excuse me. I just, for me, life is simple because I'm single. Hmm. Because I don't, I, I don't have to compromise on anything. It's a very, very, very selfish decision. Yeah. And selfish is okay. And, um, yes. oh man, we're going to keep talking after this. So make sure not to, <laughs> click, make sure not to click off because I have more selfish questions, but That's to everybody who's listening in, we are now looking for a suitor for Isabel. We are now looking for <laughs> adoptive grandchildren for Isabel. <laughs> So okay, if anybody well, wants to contact her for her services I, I or didn't, otherwise. Uh, I didn't come here for that, but you know, <laughs> I'll meet I'll meet people. I'm interested in people. <laughs> <laughs> you can reach her at Izzy Fortin, I-Z-Z-Y-F-O-R-T-I-N dot com. Thank you so much to everybody who has tuned in. And Isabel, thank you so much for spending time with us this morning. Anytime. 911, what's the nature of your emergency? 